Today, we're going to look at three different MacBook Airs. I have the 2018, the 2020, and the 2022. Now, if you're like the millions and millions of people out there that bought the new redesigned MacBook Air in 2018, you're probably wondering, is this a good time to upgrade? And the quick answer is yes. So there's two different MacBook Airs on the market right now. We have the M1 version and the M2. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at all three of these and see which one makes the most sense. So there are literally millions and millions of these 2018 MacBook Airs with Intel chips inside, and they're starting to get a little bit long in the tooth at about five years old. And if you're starting to experience some slowdowns or some sluggishness, or maybe it's starting to break, or maybe even the keyboard has issues, you're probably looking at upgrading to an M1 MacBook Air or even an M2. And both of those are fantastic options. So let's take a look at the specs between these two. Now, all of these are actually the base model MacBook Airs for their generation. With the 2018 model, it's got a dual core Intel i5, Intel UHD 617 graphics, eight gigabytes memory and 128 gigabyte SSD. For the 2020 version, we have the M1 processor with an eight core CPU, seven core GPU, eight gigabytes of memory and 256 gigabytes of SSD. And for the 2022 model, we have the M2 with an eight core CPU, eight core GPU, eight gigabytes of memory and 256 gigabytes of SSD. And let me just go off on a little tangent real quick because why is there still eight gigabytes of memory in the base model in 2022 when that was the base model in 2018? That's insane. There should be absolutely 16 gigabytes minimum in these MacBook Airs, but I digress. Now talking about the design real quick, they all look pretty similar at first glance. Of course, the new model did get an upgrade and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But when it comes to the 2018 and 2020 model, they look extremely similar from the top, from the bottom, from the inside, they look so close. They both have that iconic MacBook Air wedge shape that we've come to know and love from the early days of the MacBook Air, but it looks almost unchanged design-wise on the outside from the MacBook Airs in 2011. On the right side, you have a microphone jack, and then if you flip it over to the left side, you have two USB-C shaped holes on this side, and we'll get to those ports in just a sec. And when you open these things up, the similarities continue. They have the same size screen, the same size bezels, the same size keyboard, trackpad. They both have these cutouts for these speakers. These devices look the exact same. Both of these models came with the options of silver, space gray, or gold colors. Now, when you go over to the M2 MacBook Air that came out in 2022, we got some big design changes. With the 2022 model, that iconic wedge shape is gone. It is now a flattened out design like the MacBook Pros and follows the rest of Apple's modern design language. Instead of a 13.3 inch display, it is now a 13.6 inch display, which does not sound like a whole lot bigger, but it just feels bigger with the shrunken bezels all the way around the side, but the resolution is pretty similar. And we'll talk about that in just a moment as well. On the right side, you still have that single headphone jack. And on the left side, you still have two USB-C shaped holes and you get MagSafe 3. Now I prefer silver, as you can see, but you can also get these in space gray, midnight, or starlight. Now there are a couple of differences between the ports on these computers. So let's talk about the headphone jack first. On both the 2018 and the 2022 model, this is a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now, one difference on the M2 version is that the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is actually a high impedance headphone jack, which means you can use higher end professional audio headphones for this computer. Also, in addition to the M2 version is that MagSafe 3 port on the left-hand side. This allows you flexibility in charging so you can charge with a separate cable, not taking up data ports on the side, but you still can charge with those Thunderbolt ports on the side as well. And in fact, with charging, both the M1 version and the M2 version can actually fast charge as long as you're using a 67 watt power adapter or higher. So you can use USB-C or you can use the MagSafe connection on the M2 version and get fast charging, which means Apple says up to 50% in 30 minutes. And if you're a heavy user, that can definitely come in handy. Now, if we go back to the 2018 model, the ports on the side are Thunderbolt 3, which means you can get up to 40 gigabits per second of transfer speed with devices like external SSDs. The ports on the M1 and the M2 MacBook Air are Thunderbolt 3 slash USB 4. And besides using those ports for external SSDs or other accessories, they're also for connecting external displays. The 2018 MacBook Air actually has an advantage in this domain because you can actually connect up to two 4K displays to this laptop, whereas you can only connect a maximum of one display each to the M1 and the M2 version. 
Now those displays can be up to 6K in resolution, so you can connect the Pro Display XDR to these two laptops if you want, but the max resolution for the display you connect to the 2018 version is a 5K display, and if you do connect 5K, it can only be a single display through the Thunderbolt ports. And speaking of Thunderbolt, CalDigit makes this amazing Thunderbolt Station 4 dock that works with both Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4, and CalDigit is sponsoring this video. The CalDigit TS4 is a Thunderbolt 4 dock with 18 ports of connectivity that is backwards compatible with Thunderbolt 3, USB-C, and more. But I wanna focus on just two features today, and the first one is the host charging speed. The TS4 from CalDigit provides up to 98 watts of charging power to your laptop, and unlike competing docks, you get the maximum charge speed even when other devices are connected. This is possible in part because of the included 230 watt power adapter. For example, here I have the TS4, which can charge a laptop at up to 98 watts connected to my 14-inch MacBook Pro. You can see that in the system information, I'm getting a full 98 watts of power for maximum charging speed. Now, if I connect a bunch of devices that also require power from the TS4 and refresh the display, you can see that the laptop will still receive the full 98 watts of power while powering all the external devices. And if you happen to have a TS3 Plus, the TS3 Plus will also provide a constant 87 watts of power to your laptop with other devices connected. If we look at another Thunderbolt 4 dock, we can see that the maximum charge speed is 96 watts with nothing else attached. Now, watch what happens when we start to connect other devices to the dock. We can now see that the power output to the laptop drops significantly, leading to a much slower charging speed or even a power drain on the laptop, depending on your current workload. The next feature I wanna tell you about is the rear host port. Other docks on the market have a host connection port on the front of the dock. This leads to a messy setup that's hard to keep neat. You can run the cable in different directions or try and coil it, but cable management will be an issue. The TS4 has a more elegant solution with a rear Thunderbolt host port. This allows you to run the cable from your dock to the laptop from behind for a much cleaner setup. So the CalDigit TS4 is the most versatile and powerful Thunderbolt 4 dock you can get with 18 ports of connectivity, a clean setup, and enough power to run anything you connect to it. You can find the TS4 using the link in the description below and my thanks to CalDigit for sponsoring this video. Now, if we look at the screens, we can see that the 2018 and 2020 models are the exact same. Both of these are a 13.3 inch display running a resolution natively of 2560 by 1600. And if we look at the 2022 model, we get an ever slightly larger display at 13.6 inches. This display is also 2560 wide, but it's an extra 64 pixels high, and that accounts for the cutout around the notch up top. Now, this is not a big difference in actual screen size real estate, but it feels bigger when you open it. It actually just feels more enjoyable to use. As far as brightness, the 2018 model gets 300 nits, the 2020 model gets up to 400 nits, and the 2022 model gets up to 500 nits. Both the 2020 and 2022 model do get the P3 wide color gamut and True Tone technology to adjust the white balance automatically when you move around a room. So if you're moving from the older MacBook to one of the newer ones, you're gonna get a slight upgrade, mostly in brightness, which you'll be able to tell in bright rooms or if you use it outside, but overall, the display is going to look very similar. Now, if we look straight down on the keyboards, you're going to see just some slight differences. The 2018 model has that third generation butterfly keyboard. The butterfly keyboard originally came out with the 12 inch MacBook to create a much smaller, slimmer laptop. But over time, those keyboards just turned out to be pretty unreliable. If you just got a little bit of dust or debris underneath the keys, they would just stop functioning correctly. So Apple finally gave up and brought back the scissor switch keys on the 2020 model. Now between the 2018 and 2020 model, the slight differences you're going to see is that some of the function keys are different. With the newer version, you actually get the do not disturb and dictation button and search, but you'll also see that the touch ID buttons are slightly different as well. The one on the 2020 model is actually more of a matte finish. The one on the 2018 model is shiny. And on the M2 MacBook Air, those scissor switches continue, but now you just get full height function row keys up top. And when it comes to audio quality, I was actually a bit surprised in my testing. The Intel version and the M1 version have two speakers, whereas the M2 version has four. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the M2 has better sound quality. And in fact, I found that the best sound quality came from the Intel version. It was clearer, it was louder, and it had more bass. The M2 version was definitely more muffled and that's because there are no speaker grills on the front. So you don't have any front firing speakers to get a sound directly to you. So this is the camera and microphone test on the 2018 Intel MacBook Air. 
And if you've ever heard the term potato cam, this is why. This is terrible. This is a 720p camera with just the worst video processing you can imagine, even with my studio lights in here. Now this is the audio and video test from the M1 MacBook Air. Now, just like the Intel version, this has a three mic array and a 720p camera. However, with the M1, we actually did get better image signal processing. However, there's still all kinds of distortions and artifacts and weird colors showing up in this video. And this is the audio and video test of the M2 MacBook Air. And as you can see, we get a little bit brighter picture, a little bit slightly cleaner, but there's a lot of softness happening behind the scenes on that image signal processing. I should have a lot more wrinkles up here, and for some reason they're not showing, but you're also hearing a three mic array on here. For wireless connectivity on these devices, the Intel version gets 802.11ac and Bluetooth 4.2, whereas the M1 and the M2 version get Bluetooth 5 and Wi-Fi 6. Now to test the Wi-Fi speed on all of these devices, I actually did an iPerf test to a local server in my house to show the true wireless performance you can get. So connected to a Wi-Fi 6 access point on the Intel model, I'm getting around 454 megabits per second. And you're going to see that I'm actually getting very similar performance on all three of these computers, 440 or so megabits per second on the M1 and 470 to 480 on the M2. When it comes to battery life, you're going to notice a big difference in the M1 and M2 versions over the 2018 Intel i5. Apple says that for wireless web browsing, this model can get up to 12 hours of usage, where they say that the newer MacBook Airs can get up to 15 hours. And I can honestly say that these laptops have no issue at all getting through a full day's work, basically anything I throw at it, except maybe video editing, where the 2018 model heats up and the fans spin and it just has to work a lot harder to do the same tasks. So the battery drains quite a bit faster. I cannot get through a full day with a 2018 Intel MacBook Air, but I absolutely can, no problem, quality of life changing with the Mac Silicon. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at performance on these machines, and this is probably going to be where you're gonna see the biggest jump from the 2018 model to one of the current versions. And we're gonna do this starting with Geekbench. But first, the processor inside the Intel version is again that dual core i5. In the M1, it's an eight core M1, and in the M2, it is eight cores as well. First, we have the brand new Geekbench 6 test results, and the new version of Geekbench tests new real world scenarios and you can see that the performance differences here are pretty staggering. For single core performance, you're getting up to 165% faster going with the M2 over the i5. And for multi-core speed, you're getting up to 470% faster than the i5. And this means that every single thing that you do on your computer is going to be faster, whether you're opening an application or saving a document or opening a web page or streaming media, everything is going to load faster. Graphics performance alone is even crazier. Using GFX Bench and the 4K Aztec Ruins test, you can see that we're only getting three frames per second on the i5 versus 39 on the M2. And that is 1200% faster than the i5. Oh, and one thing to point out, when doing these benchmarks, you know what you don't hear on these two? Fans, that's right. The M1 and the M2 do not have any internal fans to get noisy and loud, and they stay relatively nice and cool compared to the Intel version, which gets really hot and the fans spin up and it's really loud. So to put all of this to work real quick, I did a Final Cut Pro export. Now this is an old video of mine unboxing an iPhone 12, and it's got a couple of different layers and it's got a really heavy color grade. When exporting an H.264, both the M1 and the M2 actually completed in the same amount of time at 943 seconds. And that's right around 16 minutes if you're counting. The Intel model exported the same video with the same settings at a whopping 4,800 seconds. That's an hour and 20 minutes. And I almost went insane thinking that I did something wrong because it was taking so long, but no, that's just how long it takes. These new computers are so much faster. They have such more modern processors and architecture inside that they can do big tasks, small tasks, all tasks, much faster. Now, the last performance indicator I wanna talk about real quick is the disk speed test, which was kind of interesting. On the 2018 model, we got 2,353 read and 533 write. On the M1, we got 3,298 read and 2,219 write. On the M2, we got 1,761 read and 1,653 write. Now, the only reason that this really matters at all is 
Because these computers come with a base of eight gigabytes of memory, which means you have to use a lot of virtual memory in regular everyday tasks. And when you're using virtual memory, what you're going to want is fast read and write speeds, but especially read speeds. Now this can lead to a performance issue and some videos have shown that the M1 MacBook Air with eight gigabytes of memory can be faster than the M2 MacBook Air with eight gigabytes of memory in certain tests. However, in my experience using both of these computers in regular everyday scenarios and for my actual job job, I'm not experiencing anything performance wise on the M2 Air that makes me think, oh my God, it's the virtual memory. Sure, you can see it in diagnostics, you can see it in the activity viewer, but unless you're actually doing the same thing on both computers side by side, the rare instances that this could be an issue, you're just not going to notice. Okay, so that covers everything I wanna talk about with the differences between all of these computers. So should you jump from a 2018 MacBook Air to an M1 or an M2 MacBook Air? Yes. Both of these laptops are just way better than the previous generation. And you're gonna notice things in everyday use with its way faster CPU, its way faster GPU, its way better battery life that for sure will get you through a full day. And it runs cool and quiet with no fan. Now the M1 and the M2 are both going to cover most users for most things. These devices can easily handle productivity, education, making videos, watching videos, photo editing, web browsing, running a business, basically anything that you can throw at them. So which of these two should you get? The pragmatic side to me knows that the M1 is probably the device you should get. There's really not much of a performance difference between these two devices and even the M1 can be faster in some tasks. You can get these things for as low as $899, sometimes $799 on Amazon. Check the link below for the best price, which is a steal for the performance and the power and just everything you get from this M1 MacBook Air. There's just not a lot of performance difference between the M1 and the M2 to say you're going to get a massive difference. The M2 MacBook Air starts at $1199. Sometimes you can get it for about $100 off on Amazon as well, but that's still at least three to $400 difference sometimes depending on the sales. On the other hand, the M2 MacBook Air just looks better. It's clean and it's got a refreshed design. It's got a bigger display that just makes you feel good when you open it. It's got a full height function row key and it's got MagSafe 3. And if any or all of those features are worth three to $400 more for you, then definitely pick up an M2 MacBook Air. However, you're going to get the best bang for your buck, period, on the M1 MacBook Air. And I think that's really all I have to say about that, but I wanna know what you guys think. Are you rocking a 2018 or even older MacBook Air and looking for an upgrade? Let me know below. If you're looking for a bigger in-depth comparison comparing the M1 MacBook Air and the M2 MacBook Air, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.